Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we are reviewing the border closure and its impact on SMEs and investment. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation on Twitter at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 All right, so before we went on a break, Temi was trying to attack SMEs. But you see, the, the truth is, um, with business owners, it is really, really, I think we, we are very sentimental when it comes to our businesses. We try to, even if the thing is not working, we, we wear it because they tell you, oh, you passion know, put, it's not even passion, like, you know, <laughs> just put in the work and all of that. Mm -hmm. So if we want to now start to say, okay, let's do the responsible thing, which is to consult you, you know, as a professional and Timmy as well, what would you be advising in terms of investments, you know, for SMEs and all of that? What kind of businesses should we be investing in right now to say, okay, you know what? This is a direction of where the, the, the globe is going. And these are the kinds of things, businesses that would make sense at this point. What should it look like? Well, I'll speak locally, mm -hmm. right? Um, because we're here in Nigeria. Exactly. So, yeah, but we have uh, a global problem, COVID. We do have a global <laughs> problem. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so I would say that... Um, for me, there are not really that many options, to be, to be very perfectly honest with you. And the reason is because uh, COVID, COVID is here. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of uncertainty, not just locally, but globally. Mm -hmm. we've, we've, we've spoke about NSAS last which, which happened last towards the end of last year. There's also the uncertainties in the US, which obviously affects the global economy. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much going on. Is working on so there's, working that out. there's so much going on out there. So <laughs> really and truly, the options mm -hmm. are not that many. But if I were to pick a few, I would start with, with real estate, right? Mm -hmm. Because real estate is one asset class that literally always goes up. Almost always. Not in all cases. I mean, mm -hmm. there, are, there are certain situations where you, you have depreciation in the values of real estate. It's exactly. very, very, you know, occasionally it happens, you know. Mm -hmm. But most, more, more often than not, real estate values always, you know, typically go up. Go up. So real estate would, would, would be one of my top picks, okay? And then I would also look at the stock market. And the reason why I'll be talking about the stock market is because the, the money market, which used to be the safe haven of most investors, has cr literally crashed. crashed yeah. You have money market rates doing 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 percent per annum. So I mean, it doesn't really make any sense, mm. really. So what has happened is that people have moved, a lot of investors have moved from the money market to the stock market because they're looking mm. for better returns. Mm. So the stock market has provided some sort of, some sort of, um, haven for those for those investors. Now and that's that's why we've seen the stock market, Nigerian stock market, doing exceptionally well last year. Um, I understand it did about fifty percent growth, you know, which was one of the best, if not the best, performing stock exchanges in the entire world. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the stock stock market market is an option, but I would advise that before you go into the stock market, talk study to a professional. Expert, yeah, yeah. Exactly. either study yourself or talk to a professional, like stock broker, research analyst, you know, those kind of people. They can then advise you on what stocks to pick and all of that. Okay, so those are the other. Then the other option for someone who is not in need of cash, mm. if liquidity is not a major problem for you, perhaps maybe gold, mm. right? If you're just looking for a safe where asset. To, where to store your money. Just that will, store that, stay safe. that you know it's going to be safe mm. and it will appreciate over time, right? It might not appreciate as quickly as real estate, for instance, mm. okay? But it, would, oh, it always sort of goes up eventually, you know? Um, so if you're a long-term oriented, or um, investor, then I would recommend you, you look at gold. Those okay. are the options that so I have. So before I come to, let me quickly take some comments. You see, you have, <coughs> you have some. Okay. Should we have better borders? Yes. Should we, um, but we should have a protective approach to help improve local production. That's from Kelvin. Angela says, as a consumer, I have only seen prices go up and nothing more. <laughs> Sorry, Angela. <laughs> then Efanga is saying, ridiculous idea driven by security. When you sign a pact on opening trade in Africa, customs should get their acts together on security. Smuggling did not reduce. Oh. And that is the truth. Exactly. <laughs> Take your comments. <laughs> okay, and this is from Ohi. He says, or she says, I don't think the border closure should have happened. The focus should be on building capacity for self-reliance. How easy is it? How easy is, for example, the rice produced in the north to get to Lagos? What infrastructure is available? Never put the cat before the horse. Okie dokie. So Absolutely. <laughs> you know. so. And riding, riding on the back of those two ones, uh, the last one that, you know, Uwa took and then it is on, hmm. I thought the timing was rather funny 
So you were going to shut the border and you did it right on the back of a newly minted agreement to remove trade restrictions. You know, you had just this African continental uh, free trade area agreement that mm -hmm. is supposed to foster interregional exactly. trade and integration and all of that. And you just go and shut your border. I'm like, mm. wow. Counterproductive much. We are, we are, th we are thinking. No, <laughs> go ahead. Thinking I know we are <laughs> thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, okay. so, so for, for me, I think um, if we if we went to look at this, um, you know, going back mm -hmm. to investors, you know, the investors, what the investors should look out for when they are trying to invest in a country, right? Mm -hmm. You know, how I don't know. Are we investment ready in this country, in Nigeria? In, like, what, if I have foreign investors that want to come into this country, with this kind of, uh, today you do this, tomorrow you go left, mm. tomorrow, you know, are we investment ready as a nation? And uh, is the government really, really serious about bringing in foreign investment and local investment as well into the country's economy as it stands today with these dwindling policies? Do you think so? Well, I think, I think foreign investors are interested in coming into Nigeria. We have money here. Yes, we do have money. We have opportunities. Mm -hmm. We have a growing population, you know. And interestingly, the fact that we have an, you know, a challenge regarding infrastructure presents in itself, that presents some opportunities mm -hmm. for these foreign investors. So they want to come to Nigeria. The challenge a lot of them are having is systemic risk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have systemic risk, risk around things like security, things like on stable exchange rate. What the investor, what, what, what really attracts FDI is, is an exchange rate that is actually depreciating. That's, that's what they like. They like an exchange rate that is, because they are bringing in foreign currency. So it obviously makes sense for them to bring in a currency that is appreciating against the destination currency, mm -hmm. right? But then when the exchange rate keeps going up and down, up and down, obviously, as, as we've seen over the last uh, few months, it's been, it's been going up, but it's not really been stable. Okay, um, so that in itself presents some level of discomfort on you know, the part of the, of the foreign the investor, investors, yeah. you know. But that, that notwithstanding, because those economies, you know, when, we're saying, when I'm saying those economies, I'm talking about the Western economies, the US, the Europe, South Africa, those economies have experienced very little growth economically, mm -hmm. you know, over the recent, the recent time. So they're looking for emerging economies to mm. put their monies in, mm. okay? Like Africa. Like Africa. Okay, so you have the likes of South Africa, which is an uh, emerging economy. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is more or less like, you know, some say it's a, an emerging, some say it's a frontier economy. Whatever the case, Nigeria is not developed. Okay, so mm -hmm. they see potentials in Nigeria. They want to come to Nigeria. The only challenge is that they want to be sure that their investment is safe, secure. You know, it's secure. That's mm -hmm. what's the problem. But the opportunities are there. They're there, oh, definitely. Okay. So, <laughs> for, for retailers, what would be the likely type of business you would encourage them to do for retailers? What I would encourage retailers to do is, if, if they're going to you're looking to do business now in this mm -hmm. current economy, I would encourage you to do something that is inelastic, something that has an inelastic demand. Now, what I mean by inelastic is, right, for those who, might know, who may not know, <laughs> inelastic simply means that consumers are not very sensitive mm. okay. to changes in price because prices have to change. Mm. You can't continue running on the old price when your cost of, of production and your overheads keep increasing. So mm -hmm. your prices will, will inevitably, inevitably have to change. So look for products that you know that, you know, they're, they're stable. Okay, so regardless of what the economy is saying, people would always use them. For instance, baby products, that's a good example. Okay, okay? baby products, an avid mother, right, would always ensure that even if she goes hungry, their baby doesn't doesn't go hungry. Mm -hmm. So Serilac would always sell. Lockdown so. babies. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ser That's so Ser true, Timmy. <laughs> Serilac would always sell mm. any baby food, milk, all of those things would always sell mm. because regardless of the economy, regardless of how difficult things are, mm. babies must eat. If not, they won't survive. Mm -hmm. So if you're an SME and you're involved in baby products, either directly or indirectly, mm -hmm. you are guaranteed a sale. It okay. will always happen. It's just it's not so much about whether you'd sell. It's really more about the volumes. Mm, but okay. the vo but you definitely sell. So okay. products like that mm -hmm. are very very important. And then, I think at this time, at this point in time, 
uh, SME should also start looking at more creative ways of marketing because mm. it's really going to be the survival of the fittest. fittest. Mm. That's, that's just the truth. Not everybody's going to survive in this current economy. That's mm. just the harsh reality. Some are going to fall by the wayside as they have been, been falling by the wayside in yeah. the last few mm. months. Okay? So creativity is going, to become, is going to become very important going forward. You know? So it's, it's, it's a case of thinking outside the box or thinking like there's no box, as some people say. You know, don't do things. You can't be doing things the same way you know, over time and expect to have a different a different result. result. You know, Timmy, so let me to come to you. <clears throat> I mean, so yes, uh, oh, so, so first, let me correct that notion. I wasn't attacking SMEs. I love SMEs. I'm passionate. I work no, with no, SMEs. I was teasing. So I'm just going to ride on everything that Banker Bamidere has said in that look. SMEs have to evolve, you know, with changing consumer behavior and particularly must work on their capacity building. So we were talking about, so when I was talking about the agreement, the African uh, Continental uh, Free Trade Agreement, right? I saw a survey uh, a couple of weeks back and the survey results alluded to the fact that many SMEs were not even aware of that agreement, for example, and this is an agreement that is saying that there will no longer be trade restrictions. Mm. You can actually, you know, manufacture your own goods and services here and freely sell it across Africa. Something that I would expect minded SMEs to start to look at to say, okay, what are the opportunities? And look, going back to our quotes for today, whether we like it or not, the world will become more borderless, it will become more interconnected. And personally, I long for the day that, you know, our SMEs in Nigeria will sit down and package their stock and export it to China. It's a win-win for all of us in the country at both the macro and the micro levels, you know, FX liquidity and all of that. Today, we have Ankara coming from China, our own Ankara. We used to buy a Kosombo from Ghana. It was the thing. Now we're seeing Ankara from Ghana. I kid you not, I almost had a fit. One that I saw a goosey soup in a sachet from India, ready to wow. eat. My own a goosey. I'm a full-blown Oyo State's girl. <laughs> a goosey soup, my own. Somebody has put it in a sachet and has sent it to my country from India. You know, so I'm just saying, look, SMEs, you, we need to start to broaden our mind. We need to start to think globally. You know, we need to start to see how we can work with experts and look at just where the world is going and jump on it. You know, we must leverage what's happening, right? And um, just to cap that all, Bami Dele, do you think that technology has a role to play in this kind of economic transformation? Like how can SMEs kind of leverage technology to see that, not only are they evolving locally, but they're able to start to compete, you know, with global competitors, which my mind would be like the utmost uh, winning strategy for any business owner. Yes, uh, I, obviously without technology, you can't survive. In this I mean, it's as simple as that. Mm. Remember that some of, most of the, the consumers that we are seeing around now are consumers who are, people who are born in, maybe you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, as I say, the Gen Z, the Gen Zs. Those Gen Zs are very, 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 you know, tech, tech, tech they are very tech, tech savvy. So you're gonna be serving people who are not, who don't behave like the way our parents behaved, or the way we, even some of us, you know, a bit who are a bit older than mm -hmm. them, the way we behave. So you have to understand your consumer. That's, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the first, that's the first principle of business. You have to know who, who are you serving and understand mm -hmm. them, okay? And then also, just to do, dovetail that into the point I made earlier about creativity, you know, so technology is one of the ways you can use become to become creative, creative okay? Yeah. How do we, how do you, for instance, do things differently? How do you, maybe do you want to create an app that will make, um, you know, service delivery a lot easier, mm -hmm. a lot more convenient? Nowadays, restaurants, a lot of restaurants are, are beginning to develop apps, right? So mm -hmm. one of the days where you have to go to a restaurant physically um, to eat food. Nowadays, you could just download an app from your Google Play Store, mm -hmm. you know, and then you just order, order a meal and it gets delivered to you. You pay the, del the delivery charges and, and, that's, and that's it. So people are beginning to develop ways, better ways of doing things at cheaper, cheaper cost, you know, cheaper cost and also more efficiently. So if you're going to survive this current times yeah. and in and the future you have to embrace technology so what do you think would happen with um what's it called now local sourcing of raw materials 
because I think one of the things that made this border closure very counterproductive was the fact that we couldn't even source some of the things that you're saying that we should produce locally to boost the economy and all of that. We couldn't source it locally. So how do you think these um, um, investors should look at local manufacturing in, in the country? Like if somebody has a lot of money now, mm -hmm. right? The person wants to put money somewhere and they've said that we want to grow our economy and all of that. How should they approach, you know, um, ensuring that the manufacturing sector is, is, um, is um, built or is grown or something? How do you think they should approach that? Okay, so you're saying that they, they, want, to do, they want to do business here, mm -hmm. right? Now, the borders have, have closed. Mm -hmm. So how, uh, how do they... How do they boost it? You see, for okay. instance, agriculture. I'm yes. a farmer. Okay. We wanted to farm our corn. They say we should stop importing sweet corn, Abby. Yes. To even get the seedlings. You don't get my point. Okay. To even get the seedlings, we have to import them into the into country. The country. Okay. So I'm saying that for an investor, right, if you say you want to boost the economy, do you think that, I mean, investing in the manufacturing sector of the country will truly help, you know, local businesses, SMEs? Do you think so? And how should they go about it? Hmm. Well, <laughs> personally, I would say that Nigeria, uh, for SMEs, I would advise that if you can't survive, not, not, not every SME is going to survive in the manufacturing sector. Mm. Okay. You know, I have some experience in manufacturing myself on, you know, on a personal level, and I know that it's very tough. You're dealing with so many demons. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with escalating cost of raw materials, as you alluded to. You're dealing with cost of movement of goods and services. You're dealing with so many things. Mm -hmm. So obviously, it's tough. Mm -hmm. You know, the only man, the only the, the, the ones that are, that are really doing well are the blue chips. Mm -hmm. Okay, the mm -hmm. big companies because they are able to um, accommodate the um, escalating costs by volume. So the, mm -hmm. the volume that they do is able to compensate for the lower because the margins are very, very thin. thin. They yeah. are very very thin. So that's why I would I would advise SMEs look. Manufacturing is not something you want to play with. You know, it's not <laughs> something you want to just if, if you're not strong, and then you also have to deal with um, exchange rates as well. Mm. You know, God help you if you have to start. You know, if you have to deal with forex and all of those issues, mm. you know, you're just you're, more, you're not likely to survive. I'll, I'll just be very honest with you. It's okay, tough. well, SMEs, you've heard. Mm. All yeah. right, so you have a book for us. Um, yes. Quickly in one minute, what is it about? Okay, well, this book is uh, called the Smart Investors guidebook, mm. investment strategies that school never taught you. The reason I wrote this book is because I saw that there was a gap mm. in the finance space. A lot of people don't understand finance. A lot of people don't understand um, investments. So I just felt a need to sort of bridge that gap by, by, by putting Putting together this work. Guys, so if I read it now, I will become an investment. <laughs> not necessarily. If I do not become it, <laughs> I will bring you back. That's why. That's why it's called a guidebook. Uh -uh. So it's a guidebook. It's just supposed to guide you on how to. Just, <laughs> I didn't say it's going to be a baby steps. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, so what the book does essentially is it just, um, you know, it's 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 it goes beyond investments actually. Mm. The first few chapters of the book talks about limiting mindsets. Yeah. Okay. How do you how Break do you overcome those, those limiting beliefs? Mm. Okay. That's that's what the, what it talks about. And the second part of the, the other part of the book talk, talks about wealth, how to create wealth, mm -hmm. and then I then dedicate about five ch chapters to talk about the various asset classes. Okay. Real estate, stocks, oh, um, right. mutual funds, <laughs> bonds. Gold, all of those things. So I break all of those things down. down. Okay, I think it's important because this year we are all about financial, everything finance, we must learn it. Even though we are struggling with the topic, exactly. we'll keep learning about it. Definitely. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much again, Bami Dele, for You're coming. Welcome. Thank it's you, ladies. Pleasure. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Isi. Thank you. Well, so Waze was birthed from the need to impact, and this year we are starting our CSR you know, focus on curbing unemployment. So if you are a company um, and you have um, internship slots that you can give to us, please partner with us. And if you are a job seeker, keep watching ways. Follow us on all our social media platforms. It's going to be an all year round engagement. We want to place people for possible employment from an internship um, point of view. All right, so in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. The world, whether we like it or not, will become more and more borderless. So be prepared. All these people that are shutting borders, they are still doing analog style. <laughs> we'll see you on Monday as we bring you another great conversation. Enjoy. <laughs>